I'm trying to think how we'll start. Sometimes it just like it turns into like a rolling start. A lot of people are already going to know who you are. I mean, I think the way that I do want people to know that we kind of linked up through Delta G because there have been so many questions about ketones. And when I heard that you were using them and then Catalina told me and I was like, oh my God, can you link me up with him? Because I have so many questions because of the type of training and racing that you're doing that those are a lot of the questions that people ask me mm-hmm. that I've only been using these for maybe the fall last year. So super new. Oh man, I've been, I've been on ketones, uh, for maybe five years. Um, and so I, I am a huge fan, um, of them. It's a little hard to talk about because instantly people just go like, ah, it's snake oil. Like it's a scam, you know? Um, and right now it's a little strange because there's a couple companies trying to get into the market and, you know, without jumping too much into the weeds on it, it's like there's a, a cocktail or like a formula um, and that's patented. And so it's not just all ketones aren't created equally, that they're actually different molecules and structures and they do different things. And so, um, but I've tried it all. I've tried ketone aid, uh, ketone IQ, H- the original HBMN uh, and Delta G. So um, they're a huge part of my program um they're they're essential to ultra distance uh and i can give my you know my honest feedback on it and and i will say that for two years i bought them full pop i was actually on a subscription box and i was paying 250 bucks a month for ketones i was gonna ask you how much they were like five years ago yeah i was getting this i was getting this like huge trainer it was like a huge like bottle uh and so i buy it in bulk and it was it was yeah 250 bucks a month and um so to like oh well he's he's working with them he's sponsored for two years i was pouring cash into it because i felt like it you know that that it was worth it so uh but yeah i mean let's let's chat about everything and let's yeah let's do i got a couple quick little rapid fire quick little one word answers for people that might not know your things that i didn't pick up from your channel for those people that don't know welcome to the evoke bike podcast it's tyler pierce aka vegan cyclist thanks for being here let's hit you with a couple quick hitters going for bike ride gels and bars or candy and sandwiches neither none of that (laughs) what are you doing uh liquid calories for me uh through and through what are you drinking? Uh, just like, you know, a, a sports hydration mix, but I try to go a hundred grams, uh, of carbs per bottle. Um, and so it's, it's thick, it, but I mean, look on, honestly under an hour, nothing, there's yeah. no, there's no real reason. And I, I want to be clear. I'm not a scientist. I'm an idiot, but from what I understand, uh, sub one hour, you're glad you have, you have plenty of glycogen stores, right? Mm-hmm. So like, you don't really need that. Um, when I go into like a two hour ride, I might bring, you know, I mean, I'm always going to have calories on me, liquid calories, just in case. Like Only I decide, liquid. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. High it socks. just works with my, it, it works yeah. with my stomach. I mean, uh, I, I feel like if you dump a ton of food into your stomach, um, now you have to worry about competing ingredients and just the volume, like mm-hmm. turning that over. So how much blood is being put to your stomach to turn that stuff over? How much energy is taken to digest? And look, if you're, if you're going to do a 45 minute crit, it's not really that big of a deal. But when you're doing 12, 18, 24 hours, gut health is mm-hmm. as important as your FTP because that will completely end your whole day a really good line gut health is as important as your FTP. i like that high socks or low socks perfect socks perfect not triathlon guy. socks like you can't go too low and you don't want to go above the calf and i i actually I, so i own a clothing company and we're trying to get socks and i'm trying to convey to a sock manufacturer uh it's there is a perfect sock length and i can't it's I can't tell them that, right? Like, it's just like, no, those are too short. Those are too long. And they're like, well, these are athletic socks. And I'm like, yeah, but those are like soccer socks. And then, then they send these little ones. And I'm like, no, this, <laughs> it's so hard. But you you know when it's right when you see it. Yeah. And you know when it's wrong yeah. when you see it. <laughs> uh, tire width. 
I'm curious about this and let's stick to your, like, what do you, well, just, just run with it, tire with, I'll leave it open. Uh, yeah. So training on the road thirties, okay. uh, that very, very comfortable. Um, I would say racing on road 28s. Uh, and then when you get into gravel, obviously that like kind of depends on what kind of gravel you're riding. Yeah. Um, if it's like, a very fast and more like dirt roads then i'm looking at like 32s to 34s um unbound uh i I run 42s uh i have done 2.0s or 50s but i will like mullet that so i'll run like a 2.0 in the front and then a 42 in the rear um if your bike can handle it interesting okay speed suit or bibs and jersey Dude, I would live in a speed suit if I could. Really? Speed suit all the way. Speed suit. Okay. Um, wax chain or wet lube or something else? Uh, I mean, I really like the wax, uh, but I am so not a maintenance guy that so it's just like whatever lasts long enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when it's wearing out, I just put head buds in, or earbuds in, and just don't hear the chain <laughs> crunching. <Fair. you> know? <laughs> amazing in the gym or not worth it yeah no i mean okay no no weights like i'm not going to go out of my way to go to the gym uh but i will like i have a little mat next to my trainer and so i'll do uh core work i've got some like kettlebells you know just a little bit um just to keep the body moving and like i have that overall like you, you strengthen the links of the chain you know what I mean? Uh, so you're on the bike stuff is is great, but you you need to have a solid core to be able to to deliver that power. But also, I'm a huge fan of cross training. So like, I, I don't want to get burnt out. Uh, and so you know what? Like, who cares how good your program is if it's not sustainable? Mm-hmm. And so uh, like, okay, I like motocross. So I, I if 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 I can, I ride moto like once a week. And so that's a full body, um, exercise. You know, I take my boy snowboarding, um, going for hikes, you know, that sort of stuff. I'll play with my kids, which is like a super hack. So I wrestle with my daughter. Um, and then that's just like an upper body workout. So like whatever you can do to, um, to, to have fun while moving your body. Uh, I did jujitsu, Brazilian jujitsu for seven years. Like, so like, I love that. Um, and it, it, I, I had heard something from Hoist Gracie, who's like his family invented Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like if you know him, wow. And I was at a seminar and someone asked him what, what is it like to be a, a kid in the Gracie family? Like you guys must be training from the womb. And it was something he said that stuck with me forever. He said, we are not allowed to train until 12 years old. Everything before that is play. So it it is as not serious as you can get. So like their dad would put them on their back and it would be like, stay on the horse. And he would like shake. And it was like, you would learn these fundamentals mm-hmm. but through having fun. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, this, we're getting real deep into the weeds on this quick answer here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But like, That's all right. okay. If, if you go and you win every training ride, and and you are your numbers are perfect everything's great i feel like you don't have anything left for actual race day like Mm -hmm. like you need to be able to go into those dark places and and scrape the edge of the barrel when you need it and if you're already doing that day in and day out and it's just a grind Mm -hmm. like who cares if you get to be a eight watt per kilo ftp you're burning out you're Mm -hmm. you're 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 not going to last in the sport so Whatever you want to do for training wise, it should be fun. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're going for, you got to be having fun. Many people do not talk about longevity. And that's the biggest thing that I was watching when the Zwift craze came through hot and everyone was on my fastest ever and I'm racing all winter and I'm coming. And it's like, well, where are these guys now? There's a lot of burnt out people. um, And it's just not fun. It's grinding for the Whopper KG. So yeah, it's interesting. Self-coached or coach? I am self-coached at the moment. I had a coach. 
uh, this guy, Tony Wolf, who's a legitimate scientist at Penn State. I mean, the guy knows his shit. Um, but like I said, I, I used to follow his program. And that was actually something that I, I found joy in was this like crazy structure. I would find that I needed everything to look perfect. If I looked at my power graph, it had to be in these like zoned blocks but then i would get to the event and i just would be flat i just wouldn't um i just wouldn't i don't know want to be there really because i had been training too hard and so you know recently i just uh i'd much rather be pretty fit like say 90 percent of my potential all year versus being a hundred percent of my potential for two weeks twice a year and then the rest of the year, you're just building or you're falling. And and that's hard on the mind. It's hard on the mind to get to that such razor thin peak. And then I, I look at it as like, uh, like you, you're sharpening a knife. And the sharper you get it, the more uh, fragile it becomes. And the more that that knife can break. And so I've gotten to a point where um, I, I hit... 380 watts for 20 minutes at 150 pounds. I had trained so hard and I was bored. Like I'm watching my computer spit out these numbers and I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And so like, again, what is the point to get, to get so fit that you hate the sport? Yeah. So I I just, I don't want to coach. Um, it's, I think it's great for someone who's starting out and like, you know, to be held accountable. And if you have very limited time also, like if you've got six hours a week to train, a coach is going to get that six hours like dialed. But uh, I feel like I, I, I know my body pretty well. And, and also when it comes to ultra distance and like the really long stuff, there's more components than just straight up your five minute power right? Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's so mental. Um, and, and that's what I love about it is that, uh, m- my mind has to be in a right spot to be able to push my best 24 hour power. Go Not so that, much my body. Go down that rabbit hole. Like what's the mental side that, how, when did you first realize that? Like, was it the first event that you were like, Oh, this is different. Or did you slowly get into like, do an eight hour event, do a 12? Like, what was that progression? And then how were you like, wait, this is a mental play. I need to focus on this. Yeah. So this, I'm going to get super deep and hippie on this. A lot of people jump into the sport and think I want to be, I want to be what's cool. And what is cool being a ultra light climber, or an ultra fast sprinter and they go and then they pigeonhole themselves and they go yeah i'm a sprinter so then all they do is they try to focus on sprinting or they only try to focus on climbing but your genetics and your gifts may have nothing to do with that and so you're going to be an alligator trying to soar with the eagles and it's just ain't ever going to happen and so i felt like i chased that for so long like what am i And all I was doing was racing crits and never finding success. Um, I would race, you know, flat road races or super climby road races. And it just was like, bro, I suck. I suck at this sport. And so then I kept looking for new ways, like new things. Uh, And then so I, I like riding all the bikes. And so then I started getting into gravel and then the longer the ride or longer the race, the better I was doing because it gave you more opportunities to use gifts that weren't strictly genetic. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I don't have a sprint. Uh, I'm not really a good TT. I'm just kind of an all arounder. And so give me something that is all around. Right. And then like a long gravel race takes into account your fueling strategy, you know, your mindset, uh, your, your pacing strategy, how you repair your bike, how you ride your bike. So you don't flat. I mean, there's just like endless amounts of things that factor into it, which allow for, for me to control those things a little better. Uh, also for whatever reason, I, I'm like a super night owl. Um, I love the night. 
and I don't sleep very well. Like it takes me so, so long to go to sleep. And so then when I started doing like 24 hour rides, I was like, oh, I, I actually enjoy this. Like my body is suited to doing, to going 24 hours, to going 36 hours. Like that is not just fun to me, but I have like a genetic gift for that. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm trying to find like, how do I apply my gifts to this sport? Um, and, and I mean, I still love crit racing. Like I still want to do that, but I'm no longer thinking, oh, that's, that's who I'm going to be. I'm just going to be what I am. And, you know, have you read the book? Why we sleep? It's a connection. Yeah, dude, you might, it might be right up your alley. Cause I was watching one of your videos. You were like, the problem with early birds are they give you crap for not being up super early. And that book goes into why we all have different sleep patterns talks about, uh, particular to you for like a 24 hour race when like, if you do an all nighter and you, start to feel that like, oh, I'm going to kind of crash and you get past that and you rebound. You're like, yo, I'm awake. And it goes into the science of why that happens and what's going on. It's really interesting. You might enjoy it. Uh, I could see there being some good pearls for 24 hour racing, which is pretty wild in itself. Yeah. yeah. So like your circadian rhythm is such a trip and you know, you just, you can like anticipate that. And so if, if, you know, some people, they just, they don't want to do that or they battle sleep and and like they can't even fathom not sleeping right i mean like i did the unbound 350 one of the m- most main questions from someone who doesn't quite know what that event is they say well how many times did you sleep <laughs> and it's like oh no you don't sleep yeah and then and then it's almost like they can't process that information they're like wait so you just rode 23 hours nonstop. Yeah. I didn't, ask... Then they just sort of go, well, you're a psychopath. I, I don't want to deal with you anymore. <laughs> so uh, are, you, are you familiar with in uh, Iowa, Wind and Rock? It's like 340 miles. It, it's not, they don't call it the Trans Iowa, but it's like an homage to it, which I guess was a big race out there. But the, I did it with my friend. We did not finish, uh, unfortunately. And it was amazing how hard people started that race. People started that like it was a 70 mile gravel race. Did that happen in unbound 350 or yeah, was it? it was... Well, so that so that's what's shitty right now is that that gravel is becoming so competitive that a 350 mile race is a race. Yeah. Like it's it's not it's not an endurance event. You're just racing forever. And it's crazy. So, I mean, like you, we were full gas forever. I mean, we, I literally was sprinting at the line. I <laughs> sprinted at the line, like 350 miles and it comes to a sprint. <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. We, I couldn't like the, after about four hours, my buddy was like this, this pace, what are we doing? We need to like throttle back. And so we did, and we were riding together and then he just had a bad day and he had the squeaky chain. He's like, I'm done, man. And then my bike, the DI2 died. And uh, the people that we were past, like the shrapnel was just the biggest implosions ever. And I was like, man, thank God we pulled back because I don't know how people are going to do 350. I was kind of bummed. I wanted to see what it was going to be like going through the night, but maybe that's for another day. We'll see. Going going through the night's a very special <clears throat> thing. Um, and it, it, man, there's just something about like, it's so quiet. And mm-hmm. you can't really see much. Mm-hmm. So it's just, it's just you and your breath. And, you know, the, the thoughts that start rolling through your mind, like, to, to me that I really enjoy that kind of thing where it's like you versus you. Mm-hmm. And I, cause I can control that. Yeah. I, I can't, if I'm racing guys in a crit, I can't really control what they're doing. They're going to blow mm-hmm. me. They're going to blow my legs off. But when it's my own mind is going, hey, stop. And and then I have this conversation with myself, which is so strange. And, and then so you kind of like get into this hippie mode where you go third person and you're watching these two people have an argument, but it's all you. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. My last comment on that race, too, is the other struggle was it's no GPS file. It was cue sheets only. 
So it was freaking added a whole other element of you could be, if you miss the road and you're like looking for a 50 second Ave in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, and you're like, where the hell is this street? Passed it several miles ago. It's like, Oh my God. Yeah. All right. Back on track. Uh, favorite post ride food or maybe drink if you're staying liquid. No. So on the bike, it's all liquid. But then after that, I, you know, I just want to like shovel food into my mouth. It's one of the reasons why I'm plant-based is that, um, I'm, I don't ever want to stop eating. And so if I can have low, low calorie, high volume foods, you know, then you're just like guilt-free and just eat so much. Um, and so I, I mean, it really kind of depends, but like, uh, you know, potatoes in any fashion, mashed, smashed, roasted, Smash. whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just like super good, you know? And then you know, obviously if it's like a really, really big ride, then I need to, I need to think about how to get in enough protein. Um, and you know, that's been something I've really focused on over the last six months is getting 150 to 170 grams of protein in per day. And when you're on a very tight schedule, uh, or you can control your schedule, that's fine. Um, but when you're out doing ultra stuff and you're going through the night, like, it's just how, how do you do that? Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's so di- like, you're so carved up. Um, and so I've really tried to, to introduce like protein shakes, mi- like during the rides, mm. uh, and, and try to get something close to like 40 grams of protein, um, you know, every two hours, maybe, uh, But again, you have to, you have to make sure how that doesn't mess your stomach up. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to do like whey protein or like some sort of milk based protein, um, dude, you could wreck your stomach so hard with that. So like, you know, some people talk smack on, on plant protein, but it's a little bit easier to digest. It's a little bit easier to handle. Uh, and so, you know, that's, that's been something I'm trying to, uh, introduced so it's not just strictly carbs. Um, Most people smack on plant protein. Uh, just that it's hard for your body to, you know, process it. It's not bioavailable. Um, mm. You know, if if it says 35 grams of pea protein, what does your body actually absorb? Mm. Um, and but I mean, I think that's with everything, right? And and yeah. also it comes down to a genetic component of of how your body uh, processes food and then what your gut biome is. Mm -hmm. So if you've got the bacteria to process plants that you're going to have a better like absorption rate versus someone who's only eaten simple sugars and only animal products. If they then try to start getting onto a plant-based diet, it's going to take them a while. They're going to be bloated. They're probably not going to feel great just because I, I don't think you have the the enzymes and bacteria to break that down efficiently. Uh, but I'm so deep into this. I'm like nine years plant-based. It's not something that I think about whatsoever. Um, I don't really ever talk about it because that's not what got me interested in it. Someone didn't yell at me and be like, how dare you eat meat? Your meat is murder. And I went, you know, you've got a great point. Like that was never a thing. So yeah. I just don't talk about it. Um, and I just tried to live my life as Do you I'm not really yeah 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 you could ride with one okay so those were the short one word answers <laughs> so keep keep the trend going though going on tangents if you could ride with one person dead or alive who would it be so i would ride i'm a big moto fan motocross fan and so i would want to ride with like eli tomac or chase sexton but i would want to ride with a super super elite person in another sport like Max mm-hmm. Verstappen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because I would blow him out of the water. Like <laughs> we, it, there would be, there would be this respect that you would get from yeah. someone that's like the best in the world at their sport. And then they come over to riding and you just drop them. cycling. Well, I mean, it would just, you would be able to have a genuine conversation with them because they would have some level of respect for you versus mm-hmm. like, if I, I'm trying to like hang out <clears throat> with whatever Elon Musk, uh driving a tesla like how hard like he's not going to be there mentally he's not going to care about me at all um but if i got him on a bike he'd be like oh my goodness this is so difficult then then it changes the way 
that person perceives me. So I would never want to ride with a cyclist or like a really high level cyclist because then I'm just getting smashed. Right. Uh, and like and then we already, that's what we do for a living. Like, okay, you ride with Peter Sagan. We're going to talk about cycling. That's all right. we both do all yeah. day. Like I want to, I want to hang out with someone. And because what's so freaking cool about riding bikes is that regardless of where you come from, how much money you have in the bank, all that stuff just goes away. And then yes. you instantly can jump into one of the deepest conversations you've ever had with someone. I mean, I have had wildly deep conversations with people that I will never see again. Mm -hmm. I mean, there have been people that I've ridden with and someone's like, what do they do? I was like, I actually have no idea. Good. It's a great question. I should probably ask them that. Like just no clue what they do for their job. Just like, to, we're not talking about work stuff and that. And it's just like, you know, I, yeah, the bike is awesome. So I guess, would you rather have someone from another sport come ride with you or would you rather go do their sport? Uh, both. I mean, both. it would be really cool. To, like if there was a way, so like, okay, F1 Max Verstappen, if there was a way to ride with him, earn his respect then he would be like let hey, me show you, you some you, you yeah. want you want to get in a car you know <laughs> uh, that'd be really cool and and what's crazy is i've i've been because cycling is is getting really popular as a training tool for a lot of mm -hmm. athletes so i actually have like a crazy connection with some of these top in moto guys uh josh heron who's like a national champion, super bike racer. Uh, you know, he just won this crazy huge race. Like he invited me and my son to come out to Laguna Seca. Um, you know, there's, there's opportunities there when someone at another sport looks at, cause the respect issue, right? Yeah. So like what this guy, Christian Craig, who won the 250 supercross championship last year, he's, you know, probably top 10 in the world right now. Um, and I saw him at uh, Anaheim one and he was like, you know, dude, I saw your unbound video. Like when I'm done with this, I, I want to ride with you. I want you to take me on that adventure. Like he was so stoked because it's not what he does every day. Right. Like he doesn't want to talk moto like, yeah. cause that's all he does. Like, so, so it's just, um, yeah, it's really neat. That's awesome. Are you going to Vegas F1? Next I mean, year. I know, I, I know of it, but, uh, that would be so crazy to see that kind of stuff like right right there i've never yeah. seen f1 in person um you know and it's obviously loud. like the net yeah it, uh, my buddy lived at the owners and house i was just talking about my friend lives out there and i was in st petersburg florida a couple weeks ago and they had f1 and you could hear it so far away and i told them hey man whatever you do don't sit near the track like we were walking through the city and it was it, it was painful almost anyways uh, who's training, racing, or maybe just riding kind of intrigues you? Somebody that you might follow and you're like, man, that looks pretty badass. Cause a lot of people, you're that for a lot of people. Okay. Well, so like what intrigues me, the thing is that a lot of athletes, they hide all their training. They don't really talk about it. They, they keep it very close to their chest. So it's hard to be so, like, well, not everybody for sure. But so the people you want to know about their program a lot of times they don't talk about it. So I, I would say what intrigues me the most is Justin Williams, how that guy seemingly never rides, never trains, uh, a, a, is is not super lean, can barely make it through a group ride, but somehow in the last five minutes of a crit race, he's untouchable. Mm -hmm. Like, how does he flip that switch? How, like, I just doesn't make any sense to me how I can train so much and so hard and like have such a great FTP. Like I've been on Fondos with him and I'm doing zone one and he's going out the back, like on a climb. So how can then he be one of the best in the world at sprinting? Like that's so wild to me. Like what is it about his mindset or his physical abilities? Like how can he train seemingly, like I said, you know, six hours a week and be one of the best crit racers in the world? Yeah. What do you think is your best attribute in cycling and how to use that to your advantage? And I'm, I'm hoping you go down one route, but I'll leave it open. <laughs> well, I, well, I mean, I kind of already talked about like, um, the sleeps side of things, okay. right? Like, yeah. um, my, my mindset and how, 
seemingly strong. I think I am mentally, you know, I think that that's my biggest, uh, my biggest attribute. Um, but also just that I love, I just love bikes. I, I wrote my grandma. So, uh, my mom would work all the time and, uh, on the weekends I would go and stay with my grandma and she would just take me out on these rides like, cause she was like a cyclist and we wouldn't go for cycling rides. Like I was just on a Batman bike, like backpedal braking, you know, but I would just, we would just go explore. And I was eight, nine years old. And it was so much fun to be such a small kid and have access to the world. And so like all of my memories, uh, that, that are good stem from two wheels. Um, we did BMX like in high school, every single day after school, I would, there was a field behind my house. So I'd hook up the hose and I would go in the field and we'd build dirt jumps. And I mean, that was just all a day long. And, uh, and so, yeah, so, I mean, I just genuinely love bikes. And I think that, you know, some people might love aspects of the sport, but if you don't love riding, cause like, I don't, really care about like professional cycling i don't follow it at all like it doesn't it's not really that much of an interest to me um you know but riding bikes whatever that is mountain bike fixed gear doesn't matter i really genuinely enjoy it so many ways to enjoy it so many ways to enjoy the sport i think that's one of the best parts about it what do you currently think is maybe a fad in cycling the thing is, I don't know if it would be called a fad, but like, I just think there's new divisions of cycling that are being created. And I I would say people are very resistant to change. And Mm -hmm. so like, let's say indoor training, which I think is one of the most underutilized training tools ever. Uh, But when that first started coming out, there was so much hate and pushback, like that's not real riding, just get out, get out in the snow and the rain and tough it up. Okay, it's not cycling indoors, it's virtual cycling. It's a different sport. And you have to learn it like a different sport, right? So if you're uh riding road and a BMX guy is like, this isn't this isn't riding, there's no jumps. Well, yeah, it's a different sport. Mm-hmm. And so, like with gravel, I think you know, one of the I guess fads is essentially making this full suspension road bike. Right. So, and, and then there's all this hate of like, so, so my gravel bike I, I did for rock cobbler, it's a suspension fork, a 30 mil front suspension fork with a dropper post. And everyone's like, that's so dumb. Just get a mountain bike. And it's like, it's so hard to explain, but it, it's not the same. Like you want the road bike feel, but mm-hmm. you, but you're now forced to go down you know, downhill, double black mountain bike trails. Like that's like, (laughs) that's what's fun about gravel racing. Right. And then there's all these other things. Like now you have to be good at the road and you know, the climbs and the hike of bikes, and there's all these things to think about. And so like right now, I guess that sort of the, the fad is to make this, this one bike that conquers them all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think we're getting really close to like this suspension bike, that rides almost as fast as a road bike. I'll be surprised because I'm always, I was riding a gravel bike for a couple months. I had some issues with my road bike and then I got back on the road bike and I was like, oh damn, I forgot how fast this was and how this thing just rips. And yeah, maybe, maybe they'll get close, but I don't know. Totally. So, I mean, like I have my arrow road behind me. Uh, That thing is a rocket ship. Yeah, and like it's not gonna it's, be able to it, be touched by a gravel bike. Do, and, and I love it. Like, like I'm doing 24 <laughs> miles an hour, and I'm like barely, you know, it's like zone two. Um, but over, like, I would really like to ride that. But then you don't have access to get to places right. that are insane. Yeah. And so, you know, you, what do you want to like? What do I want to do? I want to ride. I want to ride super far to a place that has no roads. That then I can go up a mountain bike trail. And then hike to the top of some lake that no one is at Mm. and then ride back. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a mountain bike, then the beginning of that ride is very uh, slow and uncomfortable. 
Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you're riding like road or whatever. Um, or maybe you just want to switch it up in the middle of the, your ride. You're like, ah, I don't actually want to do this. I want to do this other thing. And so, you know, to me having like, uh, the Canyon ultimate with like 32s, like slightly knobby, like on the sides, <laughs> you know, with a little bit of bike handling skills, you can take that freaking thing anywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but again, ride all the bikes. I don't, yeah. I, I don't care what it is you ride. That's what's so amazing about cycling is that you're going to be able to get out of it what you want. And so I think maybe the fad that's annoying is that everyone thinks that everyone else is doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, you're riding only indoors. Oh, idiot. Oh, you're <laughs> riding gravel. Oh, idiot. You know, yeah. it's like, bro, just who cares? Like, how amazing is it that now you get to choose 15 different types of bikes to do 20 different types of terrain. Uh, and so whatever suits you, send it. Send it. What is underrated? So like I kind of said, I think uh, Zwift is super underrated, but then also ketones, you know, the, the use of ketones um, and, you know, partnered with like maybe a little bit of intermittent fasting. I like just... Save that, learning. save that, save, leave <laughs> yeah. that as a teaser. I'm curious about that because I don't fast, but I'm curious to hear what you're doing with that. Tell us one thing about vegan cyclists. You don't want us to know if you would. Dude, cancel culture, bro. You're trying to get me canceled. Like everything is also like a nuance, right? And uh, I feel though that I have shared every single thing about my life. I've been extremely open to the fact that I get like it's really annoying sometimes like meme pages will take what i say it, I'll, I'll be vulnerable i'll i'll say something like i was really open for a while that i was having a very hard time bonding with my son but i didn't really un like i tried to shove a square peg into a circle hole and i was very open about that and then i i would just get shit all the time on the internet but i have now gotten to a point with my son where me and him are just crushing it uh you know but that has taken me trying everything mm -hmm. like everything and for whatever reason he now um we got him a saran which is like an electric moto and and dude he i don't understand something flipped a switch like he loves this thing so much he rides every single day like i, I yeah Anyways, but I will say that the one thing that I keep close to my chest that I don't talk about um, is is how much uh, how pro drug I am, I guess. Uh, I mean, I kind of probably give off that hippie vibe, uh, but, you know, it's legal in California. Um, and I think <laughs> that like what's weird is how um, uplifted alcohol is and how much like if I rolled up to a gravel start line and just chugged two beers people would be cheering and they'd be like yeah whoa you know what i mean but if i like yeah. eat a five milligram edible it's like oh this guy's a druggie like he's his whole life is falling apart but what's hard is to talk about the certain things and destigmatize them when you have um an audience of kids like i have i have kids yeah. that watch right mm -hmm. and so i could never say uh you know Hey, I dropped out of high school and I really enjoy cannabis and my life rips <laughs> like, like that. I, you can't promote that. Right. But well, your story, you I, could, and I, you know, I think like you follow Gary V at all, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh -huh. you know? So like, he's very, he has corrected sort of when people are like, you're so anti-college, you're telling kids not to go to college. Like, no, I'm just saying it's not for everyone. And like, everyone has its own journey and whatever drove you away from school. And like, I think the uplifting piece is like, well, dude, look at what you've done from that. It wasn't that isn't that moment of like dropping out of school is not you. It's okay. Well, let me tell you about what I overcame and why that happened. Blah, 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 blah. So I don't think it'd be a negative thing, but I, I get what you're saying. Um, I, I've said it a couple, like I've referenced a little bit of cannabis and I've had people say, I I'm going to unfollow you. Like, I can't believe I can't believe you do that. Um, but it's it's like it's all in moderation, obviously, with everything. And I just I just not a fan of alcohol. It's not that mm -hmm. I 
uh, would tell someone that they're bad for like whatever works for you. And mm -hmm. I mean, so like what, what I would, something about me that I I'm not public about is yeah. How much, uh, cannabis with my wife has been such an amazing, um, relationship tool. We've been together since we're 18 and, you know, that's something that we've used together, uh, to get on the same page, uh, to, to, to bond obviously responsibly. We're not like driving the kids to school, smoking a bong. You know what I mean? Like, that's not what I'm saying, but, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, uh, uh, dude, I appreciate you being open about that. It's, um, yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> appreciate that. What's, what is, do you think the, this is kind of a very general one, but maybe not the best piece, but what would be a piece of advice you give to newer cyclists? I mean, a new cyclist just ride. Mm -hmm. Cool. Like we can leave it when at that. You're, when you're, when you're just starting out, you have so much room for gains that just riding is going to do most of that, mm -hmm. right? When you get into the four watt per kilo range, that's when starting to like be a little more structured. Um, I don't think you're ever going to hit five watts per kilo if you just ride sometimes and others not like you have no structure whatsoever. Like I, I just almost think it's impossible unless you're a genetic freak, but like, as you get higher and higher on that fitness, you know, mountain, like then you have to be a little more structured or like understand, you know, zones and, and how to train a little bit. But for the most part in the beginning, dude, just fall in love with riding. Yes. I love That's that. It. Finish this sentence. I never, I, uh, I don't know. Um, I never get a video out in time. <laughs> <laughs> like that's <laughs> I'm always, I'm always takes me so long to make videos. Man, I, 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 yeah. Dude, you said something in one of your videos, a long, I forget when it was. And uh, it actually might've been when you were talking about like the budget to make some of the crazy videos that you did. And you were like, if you've never made a video, then this is not, you're not going to resonate with you. It takes so much time to put out a bad video. And I laughed so hard because I mean, hopefully no one here scrolls back to our first videos they're like really bad the critics are rough but it was good i mean i took it as constructive criticism but i laughed so hard when you were talking about just what it takes you got to love the craft you got to keep working on the craft and I, I i feel like i'm a good storyteller just naturally um this this is so weird but like i can feel the story <laughs> so as if you were to pick up a rock and say the rock is really rough, but it has like a smooth spot. Like if you're touching the rock and you're feeling around, I can, that's how it is in my head when I'm crafting a story. It's like this rock is so rough and jagged. And so then I just keep rubbing my thumb over it until I smooth it out. And I can feel these little like small indentions and little waves that like, no one's gonna know the difference. But like to me, it is milliseconds in the edit make a difference yeah. of, of when I'm going to make a cut, how I'm going to overlay things. And so right now I'm working on this impossible route that we did in September. And Canyon is like, I actually have a, a call at four where they're like, hey, man, what's up? Why is this not out yet? And uh, because the story, there wasn't really a story to be told. And so I had to just sit there for two weeks and stare at footage and go, okay, how do I tell the story with the ingredients that I have? Mm -hmm. And you could just throw it together on a timeline. You could have AI automate the, you know, it's going to be shit. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want you to just see fun photos in front of your like moving pictures in your in front of your face i want you to feel an emotion how do i make you feel like you are camping in the middle of washington after riding 12 hours uh and you're in a hammock and it's 30 degrees mm -hmm. while you're sitting at home in your couch eating popcorn yeah. like how do i convey that emotion and that comes down to you know, what it is that's being said, the music, the lighting, the cuts, like, and then all starts from the very first frame of the video. And so like, you know, 
I just, yeah, it just takes freaking forever. But man, so I, I, I'm really happy and proud with what I've put out. So regardless if I never achieve anything, you know, else in my life, like some of the projects I've put out, like I can be 90 and I'll be so proud of them. What do you think was a banger project that like just didn't hit? And you're like, I can't believe this isn't, how are people not seeing this? Uh, so the daily vlogs, um, you know, they, they get the least amount of views. Uh, but <laughs> dude, the fact that I'm able to put out, like I only do them in December, but the okay. fact that I'm able to put out like 20 videos, like a video a day yeah, that's and they're, st they're structurally really good. So I did one, um, I towed, uh, Jacob around, it was like a 12 hour thing and I did it in a daily vlog. It was a really, really cool story. The music was on point. Like it was such a mul cause the daily vlogs I did in 2022, this December were multi-layered. I was, I had this idea and, and sometimes you have ideas and they never come to fruition. My idea was like, okay, we're opening up a warehouse for a clothing brand. So I want to tell the story of that while telling the story of me training mm. while telling a past story from the year. Okay. So like a th th three layered, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I have eight hours to make that video. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> while still doing all the rest of the stuff in the day. So yeah. like, I, I was so proud of some of those stories, how like, some people just a daily vlog, they just take footage, they throw it in the timeline. That's it. But I have like act one, act two, act three, like this hero's journey. Like I'm taking you, you know, from one place and all of a sudden porting you to Wisconsin to tell you this story that happened eight months ago, you know, but then now we're back in the warehouse and it all comes together. Like I sit back and I go, hell yeah. And then like 20,000 views. Yeah. Yeah. Which, like, come on. by the way, 20,000 people here in my warehouse cheering and clapping would be unbelievable. Dude. Right? It, yes. would, it would break my town. But 20,000 views on YouTube, and I feel like a failure. Yeah. I told that to one of our coaches. He put out a video, and I had, I mean, we're sub 1,000. If I get 1,000, I'm like, oh, cool, that hit. Like 2,000, like, oh, that's pretty dope. He had like 300, 300 views. And he's like, yo, man, my video sucks. I'm like, what if you went in an auditorium right now and you talk to 300 people and they actually listen to you? And he's like, I actually feel much better about that. I'm like, the numbers are we're skewed. Like we see 100,000. I'm like, yeah, decent. <laughs> so yeah, man, it's crazy. I think your one is like 2 million. Or I was looking at another one. It's like just freaking incredible what you guys are doing. So keep just doing it. I got a couple more before we hit the ketones, which I'm super pumped to talk about. But I'm very interested. Top three soft skills for just personal success. Like to, to me, I hear a skill that's applicable to all aspects of life. Sure. Let's do that. So, so the, the top three things that I have found to be keys to, to success. Yes. Uh, is finding a life partner mm. that removes any sort of friction. They only add. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very, very difficult. And I mean, obviously, people spend their entire life trying to find this soulmate. Um, now, I wouldn't say it's like, oh, they just come along and it everything's great. You have to manage that relationship. And I think that that's where a lot of people, they get into a relationship and then they go, well, it's not like in the movies. You know, where uh, it's a happy ending and, and my heart's fluttering every time I see them. So I might as well just get rid of them. Like, dude, that's not how that works at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, my wife uh, is paramount to anything I've ever achieved. And the addition that she gives me to my life is 10x. So without her, I feel genuinely feel that my experiences would be so diminished. Um, and for someone who's like, like if you're just a solo viber and you don't really care about family, it's very hard to to understand. But um, when I won the national championship, my son and my wife were a part of the crew. 
if they were not, this experience would just only exist in my head. Mm. And it would be very one dimensional. Did it even happen? But when my wife was there and she was in my ear, like telling me to keep going and my son hugs me at the end, like that was a team effort. And I get to spend the rest of my life with those people. Like that shit rips. Yeah. So anyways, a, a, a solid life partner uh, is like m absolutely for me. Number one, um, I would say number two is to be very flexible in what it is that you deem your identity uh and and or what your like beliefs are uh and so a lot of times people get so rigid in like this is the way it has to be done and will be done forever and then they get locked into a road in which worked for your life at one point but no longer like you could miss out on such amazing opportunities. And so I'll use this as an example. Uh, uh, I used to be a cat person. I loved cats. I thought cats were awesome because I was single and a cat just fit my life. Great. I actually spent a lot of money on this like um, Southeast Asian bangle. Uh, and it was awesome. And at the time when I got with my now wife, my girlfriend at the time, she was all like, oh, we got to get a dog. I'm like, screw dogs. The dogs suck. And so then I held this position for so long that I did not ever want to get a dog. And we were just talking about this actually, because we were in bed with our three puppies and we're just like, love is just gushing everywhere. And I was like, I can't believe that I almost passed up on this experience. And then what if my wife gave in and she was like well i'm not gonna push him on it i'm just gonna settle and i guess he's not a dog person so we'll we'll never get a dog we both would be miserable you know what i mean and so like yeah. you can't you can't always just say right this now it. It, yeah. however you feel cool but be open to change at any point be open to experiences and and, and this is what i say about this is like any experience is either going to strengthen or change your viewpoint. Both of those things are good. So if you say uh, like, okay, fixed gear riding, uh, I was like, I don't like that. It's kind of dumb. Then I tried it a couple times and I have strengthened my standpoint. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> so I'm fine. I'm fine with being like, oh, that's not for me. And I've tried it. And so I'm like, I understand though, why someone would like it. I can understand, um, some of the benefits. So like, then I can, I can relate to someone, but it's not for me. And I know that cause I have multiple experiences. So life partner, you know, be, be flexible and willing to change. But then also then this is sort of contradictory, know what you want and be ruthless to attain it. So if you're too wishy-washy, then you never really put in the time or commitment to achieve something great. Mm -hmm. And like, everyone's like, bro, you got to have life balance, life balance. Okay. Zoom out for the whole year. My life balances shit. So balanced. Same amount of time to family, diet, sport, work, everything. Zoom in and I might go three weeks where all I am consumed with is a video project. That's all I'm doing. Every ounce of myself is poured into it. I'm not sleeping. I'm not eating. I'm not writing. I, you know, who, who, where are my kids? I don't know. Okay. Because I am so dedicated to this one thing. Then you achieve it. It's done. You gave 100% of yourself to it. Now you need to shift that focus. Now I need to be like, well, you know, I definitely didn't give my kids enough time over the last like week or like, and it could be, you could break that up however you want, but mm -hmm. okay. Now, I, now I got to give back to them without them asking. Mm -hmm. Right. So then it's like, okay, well, how do I, now I got to give hundred percent of myself. So, Hey, I'm going to take them out of school. Hey kids, we're not going to school. We're going to go get donuts. We're going to go to the trampoline park. You know, we're going to go to the movies. Uh, we're going to go whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I took my daughter to the nail salon. Like 
we got we went and got our nails done. And to her, that's so much better having this one really amazing experience every so often that's so much more fulfilling and rich. And then I'm 100% locked in with her. Mm -hmm. Then if I'm trying to juggle everything and I'm wrecked because I did intervals, uh, my mind is mush because I've been working all day. Uh, and then I'm sitting there with her playing Barbies, but I'm not really, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I've got the Barbie yeah. and I'm like, Oh, Hey, what's going on? She knows that she's yeah. not going to remember that, that moment. So anyways, Amen. you want to achieve something really, really special. It, it needs to be from a place that's so unbalanced and so unhealthy for you. Uh, but you're going to achieve something great. Let's do it. I like it. Let's talk about ketones. When did, how did you get into these? You've been taking them for a while, you said. Let's. When did this all start? 2018, um, HVMN hit me up and uh, they sent me three bottles. And this was back when like, it was like $2,000 a bottle and wow. Team Sky was using them. And it was just outrageous um i think when hbmn sent them to me i think they were like 130 a bottle like you know available for the public uh and so then i i, I used one and ended up having an amazing ride I, I i i used it for a crit i think i did like 350 watts for like an hour in a crit i got second uh to a world champion cyclocross racer like the best result I've ever had. And I just was like, eh, that's just me being awesome. Not really that it was the ketones. So then uh, a little bit later, I ended up doing this live stream where me and Cam Jeffers rode up uh, the on Zwift. It was like me, me and him heads up. And on paper, zero chance I'm going to beat this guy. Mm -hmm. I, I slammed this bottle of ketones. And I did 340 watts for 40 minutes. And at the time, 350 watts for 20 minutes was like the best I could ever do. Wow. And so it was so wild. Uh, I was like, I don't understand what's happening here. I was actually, I was like, I think the trainer's broken or something. Like, yeah. like something's not right because I'm putting out <laughs> such good power. Uh, but it all, I mean, it all, uh, it was, it was calibrated. My heart rate was in the anyways. So then I was like, that was a second opportunity where I was like, man, this, this ketone thing's kind of crazy. Um, and so then I just started dabbling in ketones. Um, they're definitely expensive. So I was only using them for like race day. And what and how I much were find, you taking? Like how much were you taking of them? Do you remember back then? Yeah, about 60 grams. So like a bot, like a, like a bottle. Okay. Um, I think HVMN had them in like 50 gram, 50 or 60 gram, you know, chunks. Okay. Tastes like battery acid. Yeah. Terrible. Okay. Uh, and so <clears> then <throat> I would only use it for like a races. Like, okay. You've been training. Uh, you're, you're prepared. You need to be perfect on this day. Mm -hmm. Right. So you wake up, you drink out of your special coffee mug. You put on your skin suit you've worn once you know, you put on new tires, like what you, you, you want to be perfect, right? Those ketones to me allowed me to sort of, um, a, a achieve the best possible physical result. Not, not that it would like all of a sudden add a hundred Watts to my FTP and, and I would be superhuman, but I would achieve basically a hundred percent of my physical potential given my current fitness. Mm. Okay. which is very hard to do right it's very, totally. very yeah and so uh, especially to be like i'm gonna drink this and that's gonna happen like that's to be able to dial it is yeah one of the secrets so then so then i started diving into it a little bit more and and saw some things about how taking ketones while fasted and fasting helps you actually uh, get more benefit out of it hmm. so there was like three things that uh um were said to 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 be a benefit one if you were under 25 ketones somehow are better for you or like you can use them better 
Hmm. I'm not. So whatever. Uh, number two was that you had, I think, asthma in this study I saw that was like people that were asthmatic um, actually performed better off ketones, like or had a better, like uh, responded better to it. And then if you were, um, if you intermittent fasted, like if you were fat adapted. Mm -hmm. And so then I sort of like went on this five year crash course into uh, intermittent fasting and slowly over time built up how long I was fasting because I was so carb dependent at the time. And look, ketones, if you don't know what you're doing, you could just bonk yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what a bonk feels like? Shit sucks. You could just drink a bottle of ketones and immediately you, you got nothing. Like you could destroy your performance if you don't know what you're doing. And so um, to me, I was slowly getting to be more and more fat adapted. And then the ketones became almost like magic sauce. And I, I would be fasted when I took the ketones. And obviously my super high end, like zone five, zone six, that's almost sheared off. Like yeah. I just, I just don't have access to that level, but that's not what I was doing anyways. Mm -hmm. Like I'm never going to win a crit regardless. You know what I mean? Put freaking nitrous on my bike. I'm still not going to win. Uh, so what is, what is better for me and my application? Well, it's that zone three, zone four forever. forever. And so then, uh, yeah, I was getting into where I was doing five Watts per kilo, 20 hours fasted on 35 grams of ketones, like just unbelievable. Right. Yeah. And so, um, I was taking this stuff, ketone aid, uh, for a really long time paying for it. And then, then all of this stuff about ingredients and who has the actual patent came out. And, uh, and from what I understand, Delta G created this and was licensing it to several companies. Mm -hmm. Um, then Delta G took back their license and opened up their own, you know, storefront essentially to sell that. And then all these other companies, HVMN, Ketone 8, Ketone, Ketone IQ all went to like more of like an alcohol based ester, um, that is just not the same. Um, it's, you know. It, it's just not the same. And so when I started taking Delta G, I was like, oh my goodness, like this. And I take the tactical, like okay. pure yeah. syrup ester. Spins your head around. It's gnarly. so terrible. Okay. But I started taking that stuff, especially on the impossible routes. And because it's a food. So like, it's not a, it's not like. Uh, I, I don't even know what to like, it, it's real calories mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's not just, um, some thing like where you take cayenne pepper and a pinch of salt and then that cures cancer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or like, bro, if you squeeze an orange just right, like, you know, your feet will cure itself. <laughs> like all like, like, it's not like that. It's yeah. just straight up science. It's a food. And so your body can process it. And so then, yeah, I've just been using it so much uh, to my benefit where I have, like, I was never supposed to be an athlete. I was never, like, I didn't have a pedigree where I was like, oh, I'm super good. You know, I just started doing these crazy long projects with Jeremiah Bishop, who would just drive me into the ground. And I had to keep trying to find ways to get better and better and better. And like, man the ketones like are just such a lifesaver. And so a couple of times that I've used them to major benefit, uh, was in West Texas. It was a 36 hour gravel ride. And, uh, my protocol was 35 grams of ketones to start with. Mm -hmm. And then I would do 35 grams in my hydro pack. And I would leak that into my system, uh, every two to three hours. So like I was sipping, on 35 grams of ketones every two to three hours. And I, I mean, dude, I blew through like $600 in ketones. On that <laughs> I was say, how many bottles was that? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah, it's there. What is it? 32 grams is a bottle. So you took one to start one every two to three hours. How long was the ride? 36 hours. Damn. So, I, and I actually <clears throat> asked Delta, I actually, I asked Delta, I said, Hey, 
is there like a health uh issue like is this gonna eat my interior you know because it's like it's like it's battery acid so i'm like is it yeah am i gonna get an ulcer and and they said no it's like it's food like it's not gonna be an issue so so anyways i mean i drank a lot of ketones on that ride (laughs) and i finished stronger than i have ever finished i just didn't understand what was happening with my body i was like i this is so unlike what i would be expecting of myself um i won a national championship like ketones were such a big part of that where you know you just you need energy but like there's a volume issue that becomes a part of your stomach so like how many calories can you fit into your stomach and then how much can your body digest and so when you start talking about like 24 hours then if you want to talk about at two to five in the morning your stomach is not processing food like it normally would be. Mm. So then now you run into this issue where you get full, Mm -hmm. but you're burning through calories. So you need energy, but you need it like wildly, wildly dense. And uh, then also with ultra, you're not doing zone six, you're not sprinting. Mm -hmm. So like what that does to your zone one and zone two, when you take a bottle of ketones, uh, and you maintain that, like you maintain that those ketone levels in your blood. It it's a whole nother motor. And like, whatever. People be like, bro, it's just you're just talking it up too much. Use it. See what yeah, it's like for that's you. That's it. I know. That's what I've told them. Like, you just gotta try it because so let well, so jumping way back, when you're talking about bonking yourself, so people are familiar with what you're talking about, are you saying that just because if that was a 60 gram bottle, are you referring to like when if you take too much and get too many ketones in your bloodstream, you can inhibit glycolysis and therefore not be able to use glucose and carbs and basically bonk, or is it something else? No, I mean that's been my experience is that if you just Crush. if like you don't really stay on top of your carbs and you just <clears> take <throat> way too many ketones. Um, you could instantly get that feeling where you're like jittery, sort of like pale, pasty, you're like, Ugh, and you just don't have anything to go off of. But that's also again, if you're hyper carb dependent, which okay. most people are right. Yeah. So like, uh, I just, I've just found that you can't just dump it all into your system at one time. And with Delta, uh, it, they recommend taking it alongside of carbs. Mm-hmm. So like my protocol is I will, I will pregame with a hundred grams of carbs before a ride. Then okay. I will take a bottle of ketone, like a 35 gram whole tactical bottle. But that's after I now have a hundred grams of carbs in my stomach. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will be drinking the ketones along with carbs. So then the idea is that you actually have two motors. You have your high end motor and you have, you know, your, 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 your fat motor, uh, which is a little bit slower, but that's mainly what you're like. If you look at a graph and you plot out your zone one through six, how much time are you spending in zone one versus how much time are you spending in zone six? Mm -hmm. Right? Like very, very little. So this is going to apply more usable Watts at a perceived exertion that it's because that's the other thing is that the perceived exertion like seems to be lower. I was in a breakaway in a, in a pro one, two, road race with an Irish national champion and my heart rate was 185 and I was like feeling great and I actually got a little worried I almost stopped because it was so high for so long but my perceived exertion was so low I was thinking I might am I gonna blow my heart up you know because I just the the feedback just wasn't you know I was just riding so well and you know that again that was uh that was using ketones and um man i I, I crushed this breakaway though just like crushed this breakaway for my teammates i we had two sprinters in the field and so for like it was like a 90 mile road race we stayed away for 75 miles and i'm thinking dude the teams have had to pull us back job done i'm a hero Every one of my teammates had crashed out earlier in the race. Oh no! So then the field catches me, and I'm like, "Where's my teammates? Where's my sprinters?" Oh. And then one of my teammates is all bloody, and he's like, "Bro, they all crashed." I'm like, oh. 
<laughs> Damn. The epicness, <laughs> like, st- yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, shoot. Once, so since most people aren't going to do an impossible route, a 36 hour banger, would your 100 grams of carbs before and a bottle and then sipping it throughout change? Let's say if you're doing a 90 mile road race, or let's say like a, I didn't want to say unbound because that's really long for a lot of people, like 150, like a seven to eight hour day. And you were looking for like optimal performance. How would you apply ketones in those two situations? Well, I, I honestly still think like seven to eight hours for the general public is like way too much. You know what I mean? Like not a lot of people are doing that. Um, I guess. So it seems like I, a lot I, of people I, are these days. But like, I don't know. I yeah, was... but that, that's not that's not your common I would say for them, for, for most people, I would say a three to five hour ride is like their, their big ride, Okay, you know? And so to me, the way I would come on to, and it obviously depends on how hard you're going. Like, who are you riding with? What's the course like? They're doing a know, grand this... fondo and they want to drop their friends. I think that's a very common scenario. Totally. So then I'm bringing three bottles of ketones with me. Mm-hmm. Um, one, probably, I'll probably take it to start. But it also depends, though, on how I feel like the race is going to start. So if, uh, okay, so for BWR San Diego last year, the start was basically 15 minutes poop pants effort, as hard as you possibly can go. So I did not do ketones at the start. Uh, I was extremely carved up and ready to just bang my heart off the, the rev. Then... Uh, about 20 to 30 minutes in, that's when I took my first bottle of ketones. And now I'm going to sip on the other two bottles for the rest of the day. So, you know, 35 grams of ketones spread out, you know, over two hours, two to three hours, um, sipping it, or I'll dump it in my bottle. You know, ask you, do you sip it out of a little bottle or do you just put it in a bottle and sip it with other stuff? I mean, it kind of depends on like how, if you're in the middle of a race and what you can do, but, um, yeah. you know, yeah. But here's the thing is if you put it in a bottle of like sugar, it neutralizes the sugar taste. So it's the wildest thing. So like I'll have a hundred grams of carbs of hydration mix in my bottle tastes so sweet, right? So like syrupy sweet, pour a thing of ketones in it tastes like water, Mm -hmm. like not, there's no taste to it. So then it's really strange how that like combats that and so then you're kind of like well, what the hell am i drinking <laughs> yeah it's weird but, um, you say that my friend james puts it in with maple syrup and he was like nah man it's not that bad and he's like they kind of like compliment or something i forget what he said in his note and I was they, like, they sort of cancel each other out like if it's yeah. really really sweet it will it will cut that sweet totally huh. out um but that. yeah i mean uh again though you need to make sure okay it, it's just science it's ju- it's just there's no magic trick. Are you bringing calories into your body? Are you bringing energy into your body? You're like, you're putting out energy. Are you bringing in energy? And that's ketones are energy. It's a food source. It's calories. Okay. Same thing with carbs. You can't just take a single bottle of ketones and then never eat or drink for the rest of five hours and think that you're going to perform well. Like you need to be bringing in those carbs. Um, You need to be on top of your shit before like, if you're feeling thirsty or hungry, it's too late. Mm-hmm. Like you need to be on top of that way before. And mm-hmm. so you kind of have to like force feed yourself. And if that's setting an alarm on your bike computer or, you know, whatever it is, don't wait an hour and a half and then ch- chug an entire bottle of, of hundred grams mm-hmm. of carbs. This complements people's nutrition program and protocol. It's not a replacement for it. I think is another like way to say that. So people aren't thinking like, oh, I'm just taking ketone. Like forget carbs. Like, no, this is an add on. I I thought it was really interesting. They were telling me at first, like, oh yeah, you know, it's like, you're going to get this mental focus. I'm like, whatever. And it was like 130 miles. And I think it was either 15 or 17,000 feet of climbing. And I was at hour five and i took a bottle and i like pedaling and maybe i don't know 10 minutes later it was just you know you're five hours into a really long day it was like this fog was like wiped away and i'm like no way could that be and hour seven i'm like i could just keep pedaling all day 
And it's, I went home, I was planning, I was like, maybe I should just keep going, like, and just see what happens. I was like, eh, that might be a bad idea. But when you're talking about pedals, zone two, zone three, forever, I was, I'm really curious. It makes me want to dip my foot in this crazy ultra world, but I don't, I don't think I'm there mentally, but it, it's, no, it's it, it works well, but, he, but here's the thing is that you don't want to, this just, just comes across with nutrition in general, but you want to, uh, it, it's like a flappy birds. This, this is exactly how it, like the game flappy birds, where you try to keep the bird like in the middle of the screen, you know what I'm talking about? No, but I can pick, I mean, you described it pretty well. Okay. So like there was this. It's actually a crazy documentary about this guy who made this game, made like $7 billion and then vanished. Anyways, so it, you t- tap on your phone and you keep this bird up. But if you let go of the phone, the bird falls. Okay. Okay. But if you tap too much, then he hits it the goes. top of the screen. Okay. So you got to keep it right in the middle. That's how nutrition is for me. That's how I visually see this line graph. Mm-hmm. You don't want to overload yourself with ketones and carbs and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and protein like that you're you've now spiked everything right. you feel really good so then you don't eat or drink anything for two hours now you feel shitty so now you go well i, I need food then you dump all like it's just this crazy spike up and down up and down up and down if you can get it to where you can just manage it perfectly in the middle Mm-hmm. It will change your cycling experience in a way that you, you would have never imagined. Mm-hmm. Because if you feel terrible on rides and you just go, well, yeah, that's just how it is. I rode 60 miles. Of course, I'm going to feel terrible. You don't have to. You yeah. don't have to. If you're fueling yourself right and you're now fueling yourself on both ends, carbs and fats, which ketones would be the, the fat side of that, you you can feel great for 100 miles, for 200 miles, for 900 miles, like depending on, you know what I mean? Obviously depends a little bit, but like keep your nutrition right, right there in the middle, Mm -hmm. sipping on, you know, whatever it is that you you need to be sipping on to keep that. And that's also why I like liquid calories because I can uh, track the calories like really well. So Mm -hmm. like how many calories or how many carbs is in a rice cake in my back pocket? Mm -hmm. You know, like, what if I only take half a bite? How like you know what I'm saying? With a bottle, I know half this bottle is 50 grams of carbs. Mm-hmm. I know it's 200 calories. Mm-hmm. So then if I've drank half that bottle in 20 minutes, okay, I gotta I gotta either then switch to just straight water, um, or you know, take take a minute because I can't just run this bottle all the way into my my stomach within 20 minutes, you know? Yeah. What are you doing? So when are you taking ketones off the bike? So I took ketones off the bike after training for for a while. That's kind of why I'm doing. So right now, the way that I'm training, which is so counterintuitive to ultra, but I get on Zwift and I do ultra high in high intensity like Zwift races. And so I don't really train that much, but I'm like bumping my ceiling. But again, when I'm doing Zwift racing and my heart rate's 185, I don't find a, a huge benefit with ketones. But when I get off the bike, it's a, this is what they say, is that it helps with like muscle repair and inflammation and actually helps you recover. <laughs> so then when I do something super intense or I'm doing intervals, I'll actually take like half a bottle of ketones or maybe even like a quarter bottle. Uh, mm-hmm. So like five to 10 grams after riding. Mm-hmm. And then, then with whoop, so like third party, my sleep, my REM sleep, uh, increased by like 20%. Mm. If I took ketones within like two to three hours before bed, um, I was recovering better. And so that was a way I used it off the bike. But again, I mean, it, in, in theory, uh, you, you take a lot of it in the morning with your coffee before a ride after a ride okay but you baller <laughs> you know like yeah. like i i yeah. love i love delta g but like dude you, you're gonna be spending a hundred dollars a day in ketones like probably not so right. uh t- to me i if i'm gonna use it on the bike that's gonna be four plus hours 
and usually a ride that I want to perform well. Mm -hmm. So like, if I'm just going to ride four or five hours, we're going to stop at some cafes. I don't, it's like, let's just say junk miles to me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take ketones. Then I might take five grams after the ride, like just a Mm -hmm. little sip of a bottle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if I'm doing a crit, I'm I'm not going to take ketones. I might take it afterwards, but if we're doing like the big fondos, I want to get on a podium, the big gravel races, especially the ultra stuff. Then I'm just like, God, All of it. right? Get, yeah. Give me a beer hat with ketones. You know what I mean? And <laughs> then I'm just dumping it into me. What about ketones that I'm not asking about that might be useful for people to know about? What benefit about ketones? Well, anything I miss again? about ketones that like people that you're like, people should know this about them that I may not have asked you. Either they're not all created equal. Yeah. You can't just say, you can't just say it's okay. It's not just sugar. Like, okay, like hydration companies, they all have essentially the same ingredients. You know, it's like malodroxin or, or whatever. Um, so what is what is it different about one company to another company? Uh, what's different about Huge their ingredients? Difference. Well, there's very, there's very little that you can change with like a hydration bag. But with ketones, the literal chemistry is different. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like I don't want to talk shit on other companies. I've tried them all. Um, but Delta G has the strongest ester and they own a patent on it. So it's not just because I've had people go, well, I tried ketone IQ and it didn't work. Yeah. Not ketones. Because because (laughs) one, the ketone IQ is this huge bottle. And then you take a little cap full. So like how many ketones are you actually getting in your body? Like maybe one or two grams, you know, like, okay. I mean, like that. That's not going to be the same. So, yeah. Yeah. If people want some basic info, I put together a little blog. I'll put in the, in the description here or the notes and you can read up more about it, but definitely look into what you're putting in your body because the claims are just outrageous by some of these other brands and yeah, got to be careful with what you're ingesting. Man, Tyler, any parting words? This was awesome. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. It's been really awesome to get to know you a little bit better off the, I can't really say off camera, but off your camera and uh, getting to know more about the Delta G with all the experience you've had with it. Any closing words for the people? Not really. I mean, just ride your bike and have a good time. You know, like, okay, I'll say this. I'll close with this. I think some people think, why should I train? Why should I do anything? Uh, I'm just going to ride my bike. I don't need ketones. I don't need 100 grams of carbs. And I don't need to to dive into this sport. I'm really not even that into it. Mm -hmm. Let's say someone's like, I ride two times a week. Why do I need to care about this stuff? Your, Your experience of cycling can be enhanced uh, many fold, the fitter you are, and the more you understand what's happening. So if you want to train right and train well within, like, like I said, I'm not coached and there's gray areas there, but the fitter you are, the better cycling experience you're going to have. And then if you understand your body and you understand, like, if you just know nothing, if you have no idea what you're bringing in, uh, then everything's a crapshoot. Maybe you feel good. Maybe you don't. Who knows? That's That shouldn't be how it is. You can be very, you can predict how your body is going to behave hours and hours and hours into a ride if you just kind of slightly understand what it is that you're putting in and put a little bit of attention uh, to that, which makes your experience better. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Thank you, everybody, for checking out the podcast. And Tyler, again, thank you so much. And check out what Tyler's doing. We'll put some links down below. Definitely check out his YouTube page. And we'll talk to you all later.